So welcome back again. Uh, we're going to finish up the three P's lecture. Uh, so we broke it into two parts. Uh, last time we went all through properties. Uh, we we pretty much drove properties into the ground. Um, video kind of started to get a little long. Um, hopefully we'll pick up the pace a little bit here with protocols and polymorphism. Uh, keep folks from going to sleep. Uh, properties are useful though. I, I know I kind of beat them into the ground, uh, but they are useful um, and it's it's good to know how they work. Uh, so today what we're going to start talking about are uh, protocols and polymorphism. Um, really we're also going to be talking about inheritance. <clears throat> so uh, let's just go ahead and start off. We're going to make a couple new classes. Uh, it took a little longer to get here. Uh, we're going to make two new classes. One will be called hourly employee. The other will be called salary employee. So let's just go ahead and right click, say new file. Um, these are just going to be um, Cocoa classes. We're working in the Mac OS area. Objective C and S objects. Uh, so we're going to make one called hourly employee. Um, and then we're going to make a second uh, that will be called salary employee. And just because it suddenly occurred to me, and I know I'll forget it later, let's go ahead and import it now, because I'll forget. Um, so we'll go ahead and import hourly and salary. So the idea of these two uh, classes is that they're going to be subclasses of employee. Uh, what that looks like is it's one very simple change. I guess two very simple changes. Um, the way this looks is right now it is a subclass of NS object. Uh, we want it to be a subclass of NS or of employee. Uh, whenever you make something a subclass, you typically just import the header file uh, right then and there. So it knows everything. Um, anybody that includes this header file also knows all of the functions that the other one could do as well. Um, so we just import it uh, right in the header file instead of saying the at class uh, for things that are subclasses. So all of a sudden, presto changeo, hourly employees can do absolutely everything that employees can, um, and then we're going to add additional things that they can do. I assume you already get inheritance from other object-oriented classes, um, so I'm not going to go into the details. Just this is how you do it in Objective-C. More new stuff. In Java, there's a thing called um, an interface. Um, an interface in Objective-C is what you see right here. So the word interface has a completely different meaning. Uh, but the concept in Java of an interface, an interface in Java is a, it's kind of, it's a contract. Um, it's a contract saying anyone that claims to implement this interface must implement these methods. In Objective-C, it's called a protocol. Same concept. If you say that you implement um, monthly wage calculation, you must have this function. Um, so you must have the function get monthly wages. This app protocol could go anywhere. I actually put it in the wrong place here. It could go in its own file. Um, and, you know, you could say um, import, um, you know, get monthly wages dot h. What I'm going to choose to do is a lot of the times you don't see them go into their own files. Um, you see them go into wherever they're likely to be useful. Um, it so happens that both of these, I know that they're going to be subclasses of employee. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the header for employee.h because um, I know that they'll, they'll have to include this, right? So we've got our first ever protocol, monthly wage calculation protocol. Um, if you say you implement it, then you must have this method. That's all That's all it means. So hourly employee, we're going to say, I implement this protocol, monthly wage calculation. If you hit build right now, the compiler will be the one who enforces it for you. Um, so you'll say, I implement this, but obviously you don't yet. So to say incomplete implementation, um, no definition of get monthly wages, um, does not fully implement uh, this protocol. So the compiler yells at you three times. Um, so, you know, you're serious. Um, in Xcode 4, there's going to be some things to, like, auto-generate the code uh, to fix it, uh, just like Eclipse does for the Eclipse folks out there. But at present, that doesn't exist. 
Um, so what you can do, you can control double click on it and it'll take you to the protocol. Um, and then, you know, you can copy and then <coughs> and click back. Uh, where we really need to put this is let's put it into the implementation file. What I always do is I always try to keep my code organized. Um, and I'll say that this is the, um, oh, what was the protocol called again? Monthly wage calculation methods. It's also nice because usually I do the pound pragma mark stuff first um, and then I can just double click, hold down control command and just double click and then that'll take me to whatever whatever that protocol has. Uh, and the reason for these pound pragma mark things again is it just keeps it organized um, in the drop down list so you can see it's a really clean way if it gets big. Obviously this isn't big um, but it's a really clean way to keep things uh, organized when they get big. So I build it again now. It's going to yell at me that I didn't have a return type. Um, I'll get to that. Shush. Um, but you can see that it now has the method. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple more things uh, to make your life easier. Um, there's a couple pound defines just so that we all get the same answer. Um, if we've got an hourly employee, he'll have an hourly pay rate. And if we want to get his monthly wage, we have to know how many hours he works. Um, so I just made a pound of fine for the number of work days in a month, which I just made 21, um, and then number of hours in a month. Oops, I meant to use my <laughs> my work days per month, sorry. Um, and you can see that if you assume you work eight hours a day, um, you can make a pound of fine. Uh, if you work with pound of fines much, you know that if it's a complex pound of fine, you should put it in parentheses. It avoids some weird issues. Uh, just trust me, it avoids some weird issues. Um, so these will help you out a little. What I would like for you to do is I would like for you to do this by yourself. Um, and then I'll help you out um, and we'll see, what, see what's up. So I want you to make an IVAR um, of type NS number because we're playing with NS numbers today. Uh, make a property for it that's just called hourly rate. Make an initializer uh, that makes use of the superclasses initializer. This will be a little hard for you at first, but it'll be good practice. Um, I want you to make the get monthly wages um, <clears throat> method. Also, I want you to change the description. Um, and then I want you to try it out. So see if you can make an instance of hourly employee. Um, and then make a call to get monthly wages and description that you wrote. Um, so see if you can pause the video. Uh, we will do it together. Uh, but I'd like for you to try to do it by yourself. In class, we let people do it by themselves for a little while. Pause. Okay, let's do it together. Uh, so let's make some of these things happen. Uh, so <clears throat> I can't copy paste because I wanted you to not be able to cheat, uh, which means I can't cheat. So the first thing that we ask you to do is we ask you to make an hourly rate IVAR of type NS number. Uh, from there, we will make a property. Um, you can choose what type of property that you would like to make. Uh, there's really no reason to use uh, copy because NS number, there is no mutable number. Um, also, I do want to use retain. That's pretty standard because uh, it is an object. So since it's an object, I want to retain it. And then whether I say non-atomic or not, I mean, who cares? Um, sure, let's say non-atomic. Um, nah, let's, let's not. It doesn't matter. Um, everybody always asks about that one, but it's one of the easiest ones. I do, however, want to remove the underscore from the property. When it comes to the getters and setters, I'm more than happy most of the time to let them synthesize me some getters and setters. I do like this naming convention, but you won't see me always use it. And then one thing that I always complain about, I wish it auto-stubbed in, um, <coughs> wish it auto-stubbed in the dialic method. I forget it sometimes um, and if they stubbed it in for me I would forget it less. Inside the dialic method you can see that we're releasing the pointer um, so we actually want to release the pointer. Um, if you try to say self dot hourly rate um, it might do the same thing but it'll probably give you a warning. That nah, didn't even give me a warning. Um, so it would probably work but in general in dialic you want to work with the pointers directly. Um, I didn't know if it would give me a warning or not. 
making progress, making progress. Uh, property check, IVAR check, um, make a new initializer. So I want you to practice making initializers. So this initializer um, is in the subclass. A habit that you should get into is always calling your supers um, designated initializer. Um, so if Apple makes a uh, class they would typically tell you what the designated initializer is, um, and that's the one who's kind of boss, right? So that's the one that takes the most parameters, um, so that's a good thing to do. The other thing you can do is if you're making an initializer that takes the same properties, call the one that takes the same properties. So if there's a matching super, call him. Um, in this case, we're just going to use the super um, just to make setting those two um, IVARs easier. Um, so now we've already taken care of them. Now the only one we need to take care of um, is setting the hourly rate um, to the hourly rate that was passed in. Again, you can see there's no naming conflicts because this one's a method. Um, this one is a pointer, a local. Um, and then the IVAR is an underscore, so there's no naming conflicts. Uh, then the most important thing of all, returning self at the end of the initializer. Uh, so that's good. At this point, I could go try it out, but I'm going to keep making methods for a little while. Uh, next thing I need to do is I need to implement get monthly wages. Um, here's where you're going to see that um, <coughs> NS numbers aren't always that useful. Uh, so this is going to be hourly rate as float. So in this case, the NS number is, is really only a pain um, because if we want to do anything with it, um, we're just going to have to say get its float value um, so that we can do some multiplication on it. Um, and then I'll just say monthly wage as float. Now I can actually do some math on it. And what was the name of that? Hours in a month. And then what I return. Um, I'm going to wrap it back up. So I kind of unwrapped it, did stuff with it, uh, and now I'm going to wrap it back up. Um, the reason that we really use NS numbers um, are for things like dictionaries or arrays where you can't put a primitive in. You have to put in an object, and that's where NS number is really useful. Um, I'm just using it here just so you get some practice uh, with uh, properties uh, that are objects. Um, so here we've implemented uh, monthly wages. We just took the hourly rate and multiplied by hours in a month. Uh, we also asked for you to override the NS um, string um, descriptor, description method. So this is just going to return an NS string. One thing that you can do when you're overriding um, supers is you can just kind of stick in two pieces. Um, so if I just were to say percent at, I'll just use my supers, uh, and then I'll say hourly rate equals, um, I'll try to make it pretty formatted. So I'll use whatever my super thought would be a good description. So I'll let him worry about that. And then I'll add my bit. Um, so my bit is uh, self dot uh, hourly rate, um, and then I'll grab the float value. There's also a double value. I just use floats because I don't need the precision. Um, so this will print out whatever the super would do, um, and then it'll tack on um, a little bit more. So it'll tack on um, the hourly rate as well. I tried to print it out like a number, right? A money number there. Cool, so getting there, next up, create an hourly employee instance. Uh, so let's go back into here um, and make an hourly employee instance. Um, starting to get a little messy with stuff. Um, not too bad. Let's make a little space after the bobs, uh, but before the releases. Let's go ahead and make ourselves an hourly employee. Let's make an hourly employee named Matt. That sounds like a good hourly employee. Uh, so we're going to init and alloc him. We're going to init him with the name Matt. Oops, I grabbed the wrong initializer. 
let's try that again. I'm going to hit escape, so I've got options. I want this one. So we're going to call him Matt. Um, and his employee ID number, um, if we print it out, um, it's going to be something different anyway. But let's go ahead and set it. NS number, um, let's just say one, two, three, four, five. That's his employee ID number. Uh, we'll pay Matt pretty well. Let's pay him 50 bucks an hour. Um, again, it's expecting an NS number. So I'm going to say number uh, with, doesn't matter if you're making an enter or float. That's the beauty of numbers. It'll, it'll store it under the hood however it wants. Um, also, I'll pay him 50 bucks an hour. Um, so now we should have an hourly employee Matt. Um, and we wanted to do two things. Uh, first, we wanted to print out um, Matt, just so we could see the descriptor. So if we just were to print out Matt, we should see a description about him. We also want to print out uh, Matt's monthly wage is, um, <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and print out his monthly wage and this one will also do a nice pretty financial look. So we'll say self dot, sorry, Matt, uh, get monthly wages. Uh, that actually returns a number. So from that, I'm going to grab the float value. Uh, so some challenging things we ask you to do. Um, I kind of expect that you failed um, in a lot of these. Oops, I even failed. Um, it says I have no idea. Uh, what this method is in it with name. What are you talking about? Um, my guess is I didn't put it in the header. Yeah, I don't see it in the header. Uh, that's easy enough. I've got it in the implementation file. And then presto change it's in the header. I add a semicolon since it's a um, since it's a prototype. Um, and I say let's try that again. So if I build it and run it now, um, you can see that I get map um, I printed him out, um, so it printed out, I said Matt is equal to, um, it printed out his employee ID. You can see that I, I made his employee ID 12345, um, but if you recall, my description method um, uses self dot, so it actually calls the method, um, so it calls this method, and you can see that this method returns 42 instead of what the employee ID number is. So it returned 42, so you can see that or that was an action. And it printed out his hourly rate, which is 50 bucks. Uh, with an hourly rate of 50 bucks, uh, you would expect to make uh, just a little over eight grand before taxes, uh, which ain't not bad. Um, of course, after taxes, you'll make like six, uh, which is not as good, but that's how the US works. Um, so that's an hourly employee. You could also, this is kind of interesting, you could also choose, instead of making the pointer hourly employee, you could make the pointer employee, um, which is interesting. You will get a warning if you do this. So it'll say warning, may not respond to this. Um, so this is one of these cases where you get a warning, uh, but it should actually run just fine. Um, and it gives you a warning because it says, I don't know if I'll respond to this or not. Um, but it does, because it because in reality it's that type of object. If you want to get rid of warnings like that, you could just typecast it um, to an hourly employee at this point, um, and it'll get rid of the warning. Don't don't take typecasting too far though, because here I did a typecast, but it wasn't really that type of object, and it got me in trouble. Here I know it it is that type of object, and it's fine. So practice makes perfect. I expect that you struggled with that. Um, I expect that you had no idea how to do like this init stuff right, uh, the description stuff. Um, I, I suspect that it was hard. Um, I am here to make you succeed. Um, so you're going to practice. So this one I really do want you to make on your own. Um, so see if you can make a salary employee um, and do all the same things. Make an IVAR, make a property, make an initializer. Um, make a get monthly wage, make a description, make an instance of it, and then call it. Um, so this one you should be able to do, right? So get some practice, make this one happen. All right, I'll do it together with you as well. Um, 
So I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and pause the video um, and I'll uh, make it real quick um, and then I'll just talk about it instead of you having to watch me type. All right, so hopefully you uh, <clears throat> took some time to make this happen. Uh, it took me a little bit to get it together as well. I broke the rules a little bit. Uh, just for giggles, I thought I'd show you how to do it without a property. So I actually cheated. I didn't make a property. Uh, but I'll just kind of show you a few things. Uh, so the first thing you wanted to do was you wanted to make this a subclass of employee. So we say it, it, it uh, extends employee would be the Java word for it. Um, if we want to extend employee, uh, we need to include the header file for employee.h. We also want to implement uh, the protocol monthly wage calculation. So we say that we implement that protocol. Uh, we then made an IVAR to store the annual salary. Um, I went ahead and used the underscore annual salary. Um, I then made the initializer. Um, in it with ID, name, ID, and out annual salary, again using a number, just to kind of get some practice with numbers. Probably practiced out of numbers. Um, first thing that we did inside the implementation file is we, who I forgot something. I, can you see what I forgot? I'll just fix it right now. Um, I forgot that stupid dialic method. Um, at least I didn't lie about the fact that I sometimes forget because uh, I forgot this time. So I wish they stubbed that in for me. All right. Um, so there is, um, I've got a dialic, uh, my IVAR. Um, <clears throat> even though I'm not using a property for it, um, the way that I use it and the way I know I use it is I have a retain on it. Um, so I've got to release it. Um, so my initializer here, um, <clears throat> same thing as before, I call super to take care of the name and the employee ID. Um, and then since I don't have a property, I kind of have to do the memory management myself. Um, I say that this one is equal to the object that got passed in. I don't have to release any old ones because I know that this was nil uh, because it just got initialized. So I know it was nil before. And then I stick a retain on that object saying, hey, I care about it. Don't let it go away on me. I care about it. I return self. Uh, the description method, very similar to before. I use supers. I took advantage of super. Um, and then I printed out um, the float value of the annual salary. Like I printed out the additional things to this subclass. I get monthly wages, similar to before, but a different style of calculation. If I had the annual salary and I wanted the monthly salary, um, I'd just divide by 12. Um, so I can make a number uh, which is based on dividing the annual salary by 12. And then recently added the dialog method. Um, so once I did that, um, I went in and I wanted to create one of these objects. Uh, so I wanted to create a salary employee object. So I create a pointer which goes on the stack. Um, and then I create an object uh, which goes into the heap. Um, actually, I created another object here, um, which is auto-released, which brings it up to one. Um, then it's retained, which brings it up to two. Um, when the pool dies, it comes down by one. Oops. <laughs> I should have been releasing these objects. And then when I release the object, um, it comes back down to zero, right? So you can see there's this delicate balance of how does this number get um, a retain count. The retain count goes up one when it's created, two when it's retained, um, then it comes back down to one when that object goes away, and then it comes down to zero when the pool is drained. It's, it's amazing how many objects there are, and all of them start at zero, they go up to whatever they go up to, and then they all come down to zero quite magically. Um, and if you mess something up, um, sometimes the don't forget about your buddy, uh, build and analyze. Uh, build and analyze can bail you out of trouble. Um, so build and al analyze here. It says potential leak of object Kurt. Um, so whenever I didn't have Kurt release on there, it says that you that you leaked it. So use your tools. Um, they are they are handy. Uh, this one is um, Shift Command A. I should commit that to memory because I need it. I need to use it all the time. It's just good to do because uh, you can see I, I forgot about it, right? 
and it'll it'll catch really clever things too. Um, so what I did on this side is I created um, an annual salary employee. Um, I called it Kurt, um, and I gave him a hundred grand. These are some professors that are in the class. If you're sitting around the class, uh, get Sri Ram in there and pay him even more. Um, so you can see it prints out Kurt, um, and whenever I run it, um, it says Kurt is equal to 42 as well. Um, you can see I didn't even bother giving him an employee ID. I knew it would return 42. Um, it uses the additional information about his annual salary, uh, which is 100 grand. And then you can see that his monthly wage is actually less um, than the person that made 50 bucks an hour. So 50 bucks an hour is not bad. Um, they actually made more uh, than 100 grand. This ratio is, is a pretty common one. Um, if you want to try to figure up what your annual salary is, um, just double your monthly rate. That's the number of thousands. If you want to figure out what you're paid hourly, just take, uh, assuming you work a normal load, uh, just take your number of thousands divided by two. Now, most people, they work in an abnormally large load, um, so they would have to divide by like four, um, and then you can figure out your hourly rate. Um, I'm sure my hourly rate as a professor is worse because I work too many darn hours. Um, so this is an example um, of <coughs> polymorphism as well. You can see that we called the same function here, same function here, uh, but it called the appropriate function. Uh, really to get an example of polymorphism uh, that I think is fun, let's go ahead and grab a bunch of these. So let's go ahead and make an array. I just need this last part. Uh, let's go ahead and make an array of employees. Um, and I'm going to stick in everybody I made. So I made a Bob employee. I made a Dave employee. Did I ever make a Dave employee? No, I didn't make a Dave employee. Let's make a Dave. Uh, so Dave is going to be a plain old employee um, that <clears throat> doesn't have any of this fancy new stuff. Um, if I created him, I better get rid of him. So I've got Bob, Dave, Matt, Kurt. Um, these are all going into my array. Once they go into the array, they increase. Um, all, all of their, <coughs> all of these objects increase the retain count. Note it doesn't it doesn't change their IVARs. Those are the same, just the objects. So Bob was at one, now he's at two. Um, so whenever the array goes away, which it's auto-released, um, it'll come down and it'll all work out. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through all the employees um, and I'm going to ask if the employee responds to selector. Uh, this one's useful. You can ask if a class responds to something or not. This is a really good way to avoid exceptions, right? So your, your program would crash if you called it on somebody that didn't implement it. So it's really handy. Um, so we'll say, does it respond to this? Um, and if it does, then um, print this out. So print out their descriptor and their monthly rate and their monthly wage. If they don't respond to it, just print them out. Um, you can see that I'm using a fast enumeration for loop. Um, I chose to say ID um, instead. I could have done employee star. So I could have done employee star. Um, I actually did that at first and it gave me a warning. Um, it said may not respond. Um, that wasn't what I was expecting. And did something wrong. Um, employee undeclared first use. Um, all right, maybe I can't do that. I thought I could. See if ID works or if I did something else wrong. Okay, I'll figure out what I did later. Um, it just didn't like my parentheses. Um, so I took the parentheses off and I got what I expected. Um, so with this one, it says it might not uh, respond to get employee. And this is kind of the compiler, not, not only being about syntax and not about semantics. You can see that I check uh, first, but it says it may not respond to it. Um, so that's why I switched it to ID, just to avoid errors like that. For fast enumeration, you'll see people use ID all the time, um, just, just to avoid compiler warnings. 
Um, so if we were to run this, um, we could see that it finished normally. Um, so at the end here, um, I'm going through my array. Um, since they're an array, they're ordered, so it's going to go through each one. So Bob, it just printed out uh, the descriptor. Dave just got the descriptor. Matt uh, does support get monthly wage, so it printed out him, and you can see that it used his descriptor, um, and then it printed out his wage. And then Kurt also supports it. It printed out using his descriptor, um, and then uh, his monthly wage. Uh, so I kind of had to do this last part so that I could actually use polymorphism um, in addition to inheritance because uh, I would have felt bad about the title if I didn't actually use polymorphism. Uh, so that is the end of the properties, protocols, and polymorphism lecture. Um, you now have the three P's with employees under your belts um, and you should know all about these things. There's a little bit more that you could do with protocols and we'll do that later. Uh, but properties, man, we, we pretty much covered that one. Cool. See you next time. We'll start doing some graphic stuff.